Welcome to the Macmillan Report. I'm Marilyn Wilkes, your host, and our guest is William Kelly, Professor of Anthropology and Sumitomo Professor of Japanese Studies at Yale University. Professor Kelly is a noted authority on the social and historical anthropology of Japan. He has focused much of his research in the last two decades on regional agrarian societies in Japan. Since 1996, however, Professor Kelly has been conducting field research on the history and present patterns of professional baseball in the cities of Osaka and Kobe. Today we talk with him about sports in contemporary Japan. Welcome, Professor Kelly. Thank you, Marilyn. In the United States, mm -hmm. we have baseball, basketball, and football. Mm -hmm. Give us an overview of the sports scene in Japan. Is it similar to the United States, or is it very different? Well, that's a really interesting question, because basically, if you look at the nations of the world and their sportscapes, mm -hmm. they're two different kinds of nations. There are countries like the United States, Australia is another example, where you have a number of different sports that are the major center sports, and they compete and they divide up the year. Mm -hmm. And then you have a lot of other countries, mostly in Europe, in the Caribbean, Brazil is another example, where you have a single sport that is the center sport, and soccer is often the center sport. There are other sports that are sort of work their way around that center sport. Japan is like not the United States, but the rest of the world, mm -hmm. except the center sport is not soccer, like in England, and not ice hockey, like in Canada, but baseball, like mm -hmm. the United States. Okay. Um, and it's been that way for the entire 20th century. And how did that come to be? Did they love baseball from this country so much and brought it over there? But how, what was the evolution of that? Well, it's actually much longer than most people realize. It okay. goes back to the 1870s. It was in the 1860s, 1868, really. Commodore Perry sort of opened up the country, mm -hmm. and we had a, a new government, the new modern national government. They started sending Japanese students and others abroad. Some of them came to New England, to Boston. Mm -hmm. There was a guy learning the railroads in Boston. They were playing baseball in Boston. He took a love to it and brought it back to Japan. And they were also bringing teachers from the United States and Britain to uh, Japan to teach in the new uh, high schools and uh, universities. And they were bringing cricket and rowing and a whole lot of other Western sports, including baseball. So it was a combination of Japanese bringing it back uh, that Japanese worker from Boston, when he got back to Japan, started a baseball team, and he wrote to none other than Albert Spaulding, a very important mm -hmm, figure, sure. to ask him to send some bats and balls and gloves and a rule book, which he did. So that introduced the sport already in the 1870s. It started being played in the high schools, and there was one elite public, well really private school like Exeter or Andover mm -hmm. um, in which there were a number of different sports clubs that the boys, the teenagers were playing. And this was in the 1890s. Okay. And by chance, um, the baseball club uh, had a very, ended up beating all of the other school baseball clubs. Mm -hmm. And they looked around and there were a group of Americans down in Yokohama in the port and they were traders and some diplomats and sailors from the fleet in the bay. And these schoolboys kept sending down challenge, we want to come down and play baseball with you. And they okay. said, well, you're a bunch of schoolboys. We don't really want to deal with you. Mm -hmm. Finally, in 1894, 1896, um, this Yokohama uh, team said, okay, come down, play us. The schoolboys came down. The train had just been built between Yokohama and Tokyo, the first train in, in Japan. They took the train down. They didn't have enough money. They had to walk from the train station up to the athletic field. Mm -hmm. They started the game. They went down about six runs in the first inning. They came to bat, and they started scoring run after run after run. By the end of the game, these Japanese schoolboys had beaten the Americans at wow. baseball. The Japanese, who were not allowed in the ground, were ringing the, the field and watching and getting more and more excited. Mm -hmm. um, after they won the game, the rickshaw drivers gave them free rides back to the station. They got on the train and the telegraph, the new telegraph, already announced the news in Tokyo. So by the time they arrived back in Tokyo, they were met by thousands of of, of people and all of their all of their school boy, they became national heroes. Okay. And that one game sort of propelled baseball onto the national consciousness and beating the Americans mm -hmm. at their own sport is really what made baseball apart from all of the other sports that they were beginning to play, the most popular sport 
in Japan. And it went, these kids went to university, mm -hmm. then they graduated, they went out to become uh, school teachers around Japan, and they brought with them their enthusiasm for baseball so it started percolating down into the school system mm -hmm. and from that moment really the beginning of the 20th century baseball was the most popular uh, the most enthusiastic sport in the country okay and are there any differences um, in how baseball is played in Japan versus how we play baseball in this country mm -hmm. any distinct differences well yeah there are a number of important differences although you know Freud has this term, the uncanny, which he used to talk about things that we look at something and it looks exactly like something else, mm -hmm. except we look again and it's not quite, it's sort of uncanny resemblance. Okay. It's almost like it and Japanese baseball is like that. You look at, you go to a Japanese baseball game and you sort of think you're at Fenway Park uh -huh. and it's the same sport and then you look closer and it's not quite the same and part of it is history mm -hmm. that is as I said baseball started as a school sport uh, like football in the US football started at Yale and some other places in the 1870s around the same time mm -hmm. so it was a, a school sport with a real amateur ethos to it for a long time before professional football started became popular really in the 1950s with mm -hmm. television um, in Japan the same way um, baseball was a school sport it had a very strong sort of amateur spirit and amateur ethos and then professional baseball started in the 1930s after a famous tour by Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig and so Japanese baseball has a much more sort of sense of, of, of trying to be like the amateur game and mm -hmm. trying to not be so professional but it really is okay. um, it's also organized somewhat differently in in the US we've had a constant expansion of professional teams in Japan, there are only 12 teams in the two leagues, um, and they're and what all. What are the two leagues? Well, there's the Central League uh -huh. and the Pacific League. Okay. It was actually modeled on our American League and the National League. Mm -hmm. There was one league in the 30s when it started. During World War II, baseball was suspended, and then after the war, one of the the first sport that the American occupation allowed and encouraged the Japanese to begin again was baseball. Mm -hmm. Except General MacArthur looked at Japanese baseball and he said there's a problem here because you only have one league and that's mm -hmm. very authoritarian mm -hmm. and we want it to be more American democratic so you have to have two leagues. Okay. So from 1950 they created two leagues Central and Pacific um, and the winners of the two leagues meet at the end of the season we call ours the World Series, they call ours the Japan Series. Okay. But each of these clubs are owned by corporations. In the U.S. it tends to be individuals, right. wealthy individuals. In Japan it's corporations, so they're actually subsidiaries of corporations. And corporations use them for PR and for company morale. They right. bring employees to right. the games and so teams and the reputations of teams are supposed to reflect the reputations of the parent companies, which is sometimes a problem. Mm -hmm. Parent companies don't like teams to lose because it reflects poorly sure. on their company. So the dynamics are different. And I guess the third important element are the fans. If you go to a Japanese baseball game mm -hmm. and the game starts and all of a sudden it begins to sound like a European soccer game. There's this organized non-stop percussive cheering their drums and trumpets and flags and um, cheer leaders and mm -hmm. cheer clubs and it's this cacophony of noise wow. that starts in the beginning and doesn't end until uh, the lights go out in the stadium mm -hmm. very different than American baseball and American fans go over there and they think this is really this is not baseball this is something else and it is something else mm -hmm. because what happened was it's actually American football. When the Japanese schoolboy team started coming on exhibitions to the U.S. in the early 20th century, mm -hmm. they generally came in the fall. Uh -huh. And they were playing baseball with these American universities and other teams, but on Saturdays they were going to these American football games at these university stadiums, mm -hmm. and they were fascinated by the raccoon coats um, and the megaphones and the cheerleaders sure. and they took careful notes and they went back to Japan, the baseball team did, mm -hmm. and they got their baseball team supporters to copy American football cheering. So actually Japanese baseball games sound more like American football games 
than they do American mm -hmm. baseball games. And is the season the same in Japan as it is here? Longer, shorter? It's slightly shorter, but basically the same. They have okay. spring training in February, and they have a preseason, and then the season starts around the same time, April 1st, finishes in October, and they have their Japan Series and the, and the U.S. World Series, which is one reason why there's constant clamor on the Japanese side to have a, a true sort of world world series between mm -hmm. the two countries or maybe to have American teams play in Japan and to have a more international but because the seasons are the same it's just and the the air you can't get teams to travel it's 14 hours right. to the it's next difficult. game and the the time difference it's it's never been mm -hmm. feasible right. but they're basically the same the same seasons and the same sense of seasonality okay and what about the contracts and money how does that work well again because it's more corporate right um, these are these also the players were not considered corporate employees they were sort of employees of these subsidiary companies okay. they had it took Japanese baseball a lot longer than American baseball to have things like free agency mm -hmm. and agents and multi-year contracts. So even today, professional baseball players are probably paid at roughly a half to a third what they can make in the U.S., which mm -hmm. is why some of the stars are coming over right. here regularly yep. year after year. What about some of the other sports in Japan? Well, I guess sumo mm -hmm. would be the most the, the second sport, and okay. certainly most known outside right. of Japan. And sumo's roots go back way into prehistory. Mm -hmm. um, it was a more of a temple ritual sport. Mm -hmm. And again, in the late 19th century, it too became a sort of a national Japanese sport. But it's always been uh, a more specialized and a more cloistered sport. Um, there are stables of wrestlers that are operated by former wrestlers. Mm -hmm. um, it's done in a stadium that's rather uh, expensive in the tickets and rather hard to get to. Mm -hmm. um, public television broadcasts it and not the commercial network. So it's always been something of a special sport mm -hmm. for both those who would wrestle and also for the, for the spectators. So they have a special, but nobody else practices sumo, so it hasn't really spread. Okay, so it's not really as popular um, to the masses as baseball is. Right, I mean, it, it's, it's popular, but the levels of spectatorship and the levels of enthusiasm are far less than that mm -hmm. for baseball. Okay. Yeah. And soccer is making huge strides all around the world. Of right. course, it's the main s right. sport in many countries, and right. in, in the United States, it's really taken off. Right. Right. Is it, uh, does it have any role in Japan? Um, very much so, and it's it's also like the United States. Mm -hmm. In the 20th century, soccer was as marginal in Japan as it was in the U.S. Mm -hmm. It was played in schools, and a couple of companies had soccer teams, but it was completely overshadowed by baseball and sumo and some of the other sports. But by the end of the 20th century, you know, soccer is the global game. Mm -hmm. Japan wants to be a global player. East Asia wants to be a global player. So not just Japan, but Korea and Taiwan and certainly China uh, all of a sudden wanted to participate more in this global game. And Japan, I mean, it, it has geopolitical connotations. Sure. Japan wanted to move away from a U.S.-Japan relationship and more to a, a global positioning. And mm -hmm. so soccer has taken on that, that meaning in Japan mm -hmm. as, as the global game. They have a professional league um, that started in the 90s, and like the U.S., it's had trouble getting traction, mm -hmm. but it's actually stronger in Japan than in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, Japanese players are going to Europe uh, to play in the premier leagues in Europe. There's a lot of satellite broadcasting of European soccer games into Japan. The, con the countries become soccer mad. You look at kids in high school, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden the soccer teams are becoming as popular as the baseball teams, um, sort of like in places in parts of the U.S. where the soccer teams are drawing more of the athletes than some of the football right, teams. Right. So it's, it's really important. The other importance is soccer 
in East Asia, where mm -hmm. tensions are rising and China and Japan are contesting and Korea and, and Taiwan don't want to be left behind, baseball is not a sport in which you can play out the East Asian rivalries. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can't play baseball with China or, or, or baseball even with Korea. Um, you, can't, you, you can't play judo or the martial arts. Soccer is the sport where all of the East Asian nations can play each other at their fiercest, most competitive. I mean, it really is, is, a, is, is a breeder of kind of sports nationalism mm -hmm. in East Asia, and I think that's, that's another reason. And I think yet another reason is gender. That is, there's baseball, but women are not allowed to play baseball. They okay. play softball, and actually Japanese women's softball team has been world champions. It's okay. quite good, but it's not played much in schools. Soccer is the one major sport where women can play. Women's team and the Japanese women's soccer team won the, the Women's mm -hmm. World Cup this year. They're oh, wow. really powerful. Okay. Um, and so within the country, I think soccer is becoming popular among the younger generation for, for the, also because girls can play soccer in school and girls now have role models mm -hmm. among the elite women's soccer players. And the Women's World Cup is becoming much more of a of a of a high a visible sort right. of global event. Sure, right. um, so I think, you know, baseball and sumo were Japan's 20th century sports, mm -hmm. but there's a strong likelihood that soccer is going to be Japan's 21st century sport. You mentioned earlier that some of the baseball players would go um, to watch American football games right. and took back the cheering to the baseball right. games. I am curious to know if you have any thoughts as to do they play f football in Japan at, at all? Um, and if they do, why do you think it hasn't taken off to the extent that baseball has? Well, it hasn't taken off because baseball smothered all okay. sports, not just American football. Okay. It is a popular sport at cert in certain university leagues. Mm -hmm. That is, it remained like rugby. Rugby is also popular like it is in the U.S. Okay. in university clubs. I and see. one interesting feature of sports in Japan is that corporations have played a much more important role in sponsoring sports and organizing sports teams than in the U.S. or in Europe. Mm -hmm. So all the major corporations from the, the, throughout the second half of the 20th century had uh, baseball teams and basketball teams and some American football teams for their employees. And they would actually recruit employees to play on their sports teams. Mm -hmm. um, and there were inter-corporate leagues so that like IBM and Ford and Chevrolet uh, would play, would have a basketball league or an mm -hmm. ice hockey league or swimming. I mean, they had a wide range of sports. And so Japan's, I mean, things like the Olympic development in Japan was largely due to and fed by this corporate investment in sports and, and sports teams. Mm -hmm. And so th things like rugby and American football have found, have, have survived um, as niche sports, uh, sports in these elite universities and in some of these big corporations. But by and large, big kids get channeled into sumo and the rest of them get channeled into baseball. When I think of Japan um, and sports, a lot of times I go to the martial arts. Right. Um, and you had mentioned judo. Right. Uh, how is that, um, what's the status of judo in Japan today? Well. The ironic thing is judo is an individual sport, mm -hmm. right? and baseball is a team sport. And we always think of the Japanese as very collectivist, mm -hmm. a very group. But back in the 1870s, 1880s, the Ministry of Education, this new Ministry of Education looked around and said, we have a problem in our school system. Our kids are not, uh, not getting physically strong. They're weak. We need to do something. And, and they said, well, we have a choice. We can either encourage judo and martial arts or we can encourage some Western sports and say, we don't want these Japanese, they're too individualistic. Uh -huh. We want the American sports and the, and the British sports because they teach team play. I see. Um, and so judo and the other martial arts actually were not as encouraged in Japan mm -hmm. um, in the school system and as, 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 or as popular pursuits. But judo, interestingly, is Japan's first global sport. That is, judo from the 1920s, there were a couple of, the, the, in fact, the fellow who 
in effect created, invented judo out of a number of different indigenous martial arts traditions, then went to the United States, went to South America, mm -hmm. went to Europe and brought judo. So judo traveled really around the world mm -hmm. from the 1920s on as Japan's contribution to the 20th century sports inventory. Mm -hmm. And the key moment, the moment that really shocked the Japanese was in 1964 when the Tokyo Olympics were held, the first time the Olympics ever came to Asia. Mm -hmm. And Tokyo, this was Tokyo, Japan's coming out party after World War II. They were going to demonstrate that it, they had recovered, that they were a normal nation, and they had a couple of star judo players okay. in, the, in the, the heavyweight or the, the open weight category. The Japanese star lost to a Dutch judo master oh and this shocked the Japanese at their own sport and, and well, all it did was to say that judo had become fully globalized right. at that point so judo exists in Japan but the 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 international judo organization is not in Japan it's in Europe and judo is is much more of a global sport now because of you know it's basically Japan's gift to sure. 20th century sports what do you think is the future of sports in Japan well it's hard to predict. Of course. I mean, certainly Japan, China, East Asia is the most dynamic sports market in the world now in terms of sports marketing, in terms of sports promotion. Mm -hmm. And you look at soccer and you look at the Olympics, um, you look at golf and you look at a number of uh, track and field even. Um, so in East Asia generally, um, it will be probably the most dynamic growth area for sports in the next couple decades. Mm -hmm. And the Japanese consume sports as, as avidly as people anywhere. Um, they watch baseball, although increasingly they're watching our baseball mm -hmm. rather than their own baseball. Um, they're certainly watching soccer from all over the world. Um, sports that aren't that important in the U.S. like Auto racing, mm -hmm. um, very popular in Japan, so it's part of the international F1 auto racing wow. circuit. Okay. Horse racing is popular in Japan. So they've connected in ways with sports around the world that actually don't necessarily mean that sports will grow in Japan, but certainly sports consciousness and sports markets and sports enthusiasm and sports nationalism, for better or worse, uh, will be important in Japan for the foreseeable future. This has yeah. been really interesting. Thanks so much for being oh, here. Oh, thank you very much. And Enjoyed some it. Of your work. For more information about Professor Kelly and his work, please visit our website at yale.edu backslash Macmillan Report. Be sure to join us again for another episode of the Macmillan Report, made possible through funding from the Whitney and Betty Macmillan Center for International and Area Studies at Yale. Mm -hmm.